Good afternoon. So, uh, everybody ready to fall asleep in the coveted uh, post-lunch spot? <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, this talk is about assertions. If you're here for that, you're in the right place. If you're not, you can stay anyhow. Um, I'm David Fetter, as you can see. I work at uh, Authenticate, a uh, security company, as a database administrator. Um, they're doing some really interesting stuff, which I can talk to you guys about at some fr other point. I'm just grateful to them and to folks here at PGCon for uh, allowing me this opportunity to speak. <clears throat> I've also done a few minor patches in Postgres. Uh, full disclosure, this is not my patch. This is Joe Wildish's patch, and uh, I'm hoping to, to get some improvements into it. Um, so, who here had heard of assertions before they looked at my talk slot? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> well, uh, these, uh, the, the, these, uh, these go back a while. Uh, I think they were specified in SQL 92. I'm sure Marcus will correct me if I'm mistaken on any matter of the spec. <laughs> um, and uh, for whatever reason, nobody had actually gone and implemented them until now. Actually, we're going to talk about the whatever reasons in a little bit. Um, but first, let's go to the, like, what are they? Um, these are data constraints expressed in SQL, which can span multiple tables. So think of foreign keys as being the simplest type. Uh, we don't actually do foreign keys this way, but that's so you can constrain things across tables. Um, and this is the thing, is it greatly increases the capabilities that we have to make those constraints. I'd like to start with a little toy application I wrote. <laughs> and I mean, really mean toy. Um, which is a uh, tool lending library. <clears throat> so imagine a situation where you have a tool lending library with, say, hammers. Um, you don't really care a whole lot about which hammer somebody has picked out. You care about how many are in the inventory and how many are checked out, because the hammers are fungible. They can swap one for the other. It's, it's not really important to track them individually, and maybe you don't want that hassle. So here's the available tools. This represents our inventory. Um, so we've got a surrogate key here, because I got lazy. We probably shouldn't have one, but there it is. <laughs> Does anybody try to avoid surrogate keys in production? Really? <laughs> yeah, it's it's it. Everybody knows you're not supposed to do it, but <laughs> it it really is so much simpler to to handle, and all the tools are are tooled up to deal with it. So we I'm going to use it here. Um, so I have a tool type, uh, which is you know we'll we'll, we'll see one of those. Um, we see how many are available. Uh, I picked it. Uh, I picked a default. Um, I don't know how you could have negative tools, so I made sure we couldn't. <laughs> Does anybody know how we could have negative tools? Okay. Buy your tools from somebody and pay on credit? Buy the okay. tools from somebody and pay on credit. Okay, I, I guess that could be sort of a, yeah, yeah tools owed. You install a really bad tool that causes more maintenance. <laughs> you promised a tool to somebody as soon as it comes in. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, uh, 
promise the tool to somebody who, as soon as it comes in, bad ones that cause more trouble than, than, than they, they help. Okay, so there could be ways, but we're modeling it this way. <laughs> so, um, and then to track the tools that have come out of this inventory, we have another table, and it just has checked out by. I guess in a real system, this would refer to our user table. Um, or, you know, our, our, you know, there, there could be really complex things around that, but we're, I'm just going to make it a text. And of course, it has to have a tool that's out of the available tool set. Tool set. So to find out what tools a person has checked out, uh, we assume they can only, well, we haven't actually assumed that they can only check out one. Uh, <laughs> but there would be a row for each tool that they check out. Um, so we want to ensure that people can't check out more tools than exist. And we can't reduce the tool inventory when there are more <laughs> tools checked out than, uh, than what we're reducing it to, because that doesn't physically make sense. Right, so, And this is how we're going to do it. That's it. That's that's our whole code. <laughs> so we have here, let's see if I can get it. Okay, so create assertion. That's the that's what this thing's about. <laughs> a name, a check, an open pren, and a closed pren. That's I think the correct thing from the standard. <laughs> Somebody will tell me for sure if it's not. Um, and then what What's inside of it kind of looks, if you look at it sideways a little bit, it looks like the way you'd write a check constraint, um, because it kind of is. Um, so it has, it, it's a thing that returns a Boolean, and your, your check is the thing that, uh, the thing you're trying to prevent is the thing that returns false. Um, so we want to, uh, we want to make sure that there's never a situation, so not exists, select one from these things joined on their tool ID, uh, group by the tool ID, having count star greater than available. So when you, ch when you, when you try to check out the, the n plus first tool when you only have n tools in the shed, uh, <laughs> this thing should prevent it. Um, and, because <laughs> I'm brave, <laughs> we're going to do a live demo. So this is the uh, is that too big, or do, would you like me to take that down a few sizes? Sorry? OK. I didn't quite know what would show up on the screen here, so I, I, uh, I, went, I went with the assumption that, that it would be illegible if I made it too big. Um, OK. So that, that's the available tool table. Checked out tools. Create assertion. Let's see what happens. Yay! <laughs> OK, now I'm going to stock up on ball peen hammers. So there's our ball peen hammers. We have three of them. <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, and then I'm going to get and see, have my uh, three eldest um, Check each check out one hammer. So Leo gets one, Edith gets one, Ruth gets one. Um, and we're good so far. Now this should fail because we're out of hammers. Right? We we said we're we're uh, we only had three in the inventory. Boom. There we go. Assertion out of tools violated. Note this error. So there's a lot 
easier to diagnose later on when you want to figure out what happened here. <laughs> it, it tells you very directly what thing you violated rather than what piece of code, what line of code you were executing um, uh, inside of a trigger function, let's say, um, when, this, when stuff went wrong. Now this should fail too. Anybody know why? Yep, because there's three checked out. So unfortunately, <whistles> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> this is one of the many things about the current patch that I would like to get fixed because <laughs> uh, it, you know, doesn't actually work. <laughs> Which error message? Oh, well, that's, that's me. <laughs> I, I, I put that in there because I knew that we weren't supposed to. It, it's, it should have produced an error message. It didn't produce an error message. It did succeed. You see that down there it says update one? Sorry? Oh, okay, this is a PSQL script that I'm happy to share afterwards. It's basically a bunch of echoes and some uh, backslash echoes and backslash prompts. Um, and I shamelessly stole that from uh, Jonathan Katz, who showed me how yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I had something that was a lot less uh, easy to follow and easy to lead than this, and I totally, um, totally switched to it. So... Okay. Oops. Well, that almost worked. <laughs> um, and uh, we, I, I, I would desperately like to help get some help working on this patch because <laughs> it's <clears throat> it, uh, it it's it's it was in a proof of concept state and. It's proved the concept. You, you you saw something there that actually, you know, a, a lot happened before it failed. Um, is it in PostgreSQL 11? Anybody? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> Can we still do this? Can we still do get some do something that gets an effect like this in PostgreSQL 11? Well, yes. Um, is it elegant or easy to get correct? <laughs> nope. <laughs> How do we do this? Well, we need a trigger with its own function for each table involved in the assertion and for each assertion at least in general. So we can't share code among any of these things in general. Um, let's get started. So here's our first trigger. Um, when you're writing to um, available, you need to look and check out to see whether what you're doing is kosher. So that's what we're going to check here. So we write a chunk of PLPGSQL, which I hope is relatively legible. Um, so we look for a, uh, a tool type that violates the constraint, basically, right, from the, um, and if we find it, um, what, no, no, it won't go sideways, oops. Mm. Outsmarted myself a little bit. Oh, did I? Oh, haha. Uh Okay, 
Uh, let's see here. That was the fun ones. Okay, so um, so if we find something that violates the, the constraint when we execute this query, um, we raise an exception and we we leave. Um, by the way, I don't know that this has correct locking behavior. <laughs> Does anybody have an idea whether it might, maybe? It Sorry? It doesn't. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. <laughs> so the, the, the answer was mostly because read committed isolation. Um, and this brings me to an interesting quandary um, which is, uh, do we want to, does it even make sense to have assertions in isolation levels lower than serializable? Like, does that even work? I don't know. It's, it's something I think about a little bit. Yes? Uh, out yeah, the comment was uh, you have to have something in the trigger that checks for serializable mode and then throws out your, your rights otherwise. And um, I've actually done that in a couple of cases where I, um, where I, was, uh, where I had this deployed in production. Um, but I'm not sure if it has to be quite that, uh, <laughs> that radical. Yes? Can it also work with locking? I suppose you would select for update or something. How would that, if you're looking at the other table, how would it find the um, tuples that might arrive as you're, if you're, while you're locking? So uh, lock the table for insert. Lock the table for insert. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> That's going to scale. <laughs> Everybody's going to love that. <laughs> um, yeah, so your, your, your point is very well taken, which is that it's, uh, do, we, do we even have um, the kind of locks we'd need to do this? Yes. Okay. Okay, so in, in this case, we could lock the primary key on the yeah. first and prevent inserts on the second. Okay, so that's <laughs> unpretty. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that maybe just when we have assertions and you start to write to something that's involved in the assertion, maybe it should just bounce that right unless you're in serializable isolation. Um, like maybe we just do that as a, as a implementation detail of our of how we do assertions does that seem okay who, who thinks that seems unreasonable okay <laughs> who see, thinks that seems relatively reasonable <laughs> okay uh, so, so who's I, still I'm, yes I'm a bit confused, yes so, so are you now talking about the triggers that we use to simulate the assertions or about the assertions well um, I assume that um, I don't know what the SQL standard actually says. I guess I was, <laughs> and I'm looking at the guy who might know that I know best. And <laughs> he's, um, so it's possible that it, that it offers some guidance, but um, I've noticed that concurrency is something that it doesn't tend to worry about terribly much like all through the, the systems that you want to write. Um, Marcus, maybe you could, am I wrong about that one? I think it boils down to transaction isolation. Right, but d does the, the, when the SQL standard describes a feature which is not one of the isolation levels, it do, it, the parts of, the tiny parts of it I've read don't seem to go very much to, you know, this works in this isolation level and this should do that and the, this other, okay, that's not there. Um, so I guess the answer is, 
Hello. I guess the answer is that I don't know yet, but I suspect it doesn't give such guidance. Um, but the, the original question was, am I talking about the, uh, isolation for the trigger or for the, um, or for the implementation as, as a DDL? And I think it's, it's got to be the same for both. Like, if it's, <laughs> if it's implemented for one, it kind of has to be for, if, if we have a restriction on one, it has to be a, a restriction that applies all the way across. Um, basically, to rights on the things involved in the assertion. Mm, that's that 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 that's seeable from inside the like the the from the way this thing's implemented. Yeah, so it's, it's, should it catch fire if you're in you committed, but everything's wonderful if you're if if, if you're in serializable. That doesn't sound like a reasonable answer. You probably it needs to have slightly different semantics depending on your transaction. So the comment was uh, having different behavior based on the transaction isolation level might not be acceptable. Um, that's where I'm up in the air, and I, I think we should like keep moving because <laughs> um, there's, there's more to this. Uh, so here's the actual trigger. Um, and then here's the trigger function for the going the opposite direction. So when you're writing to checked out in some way, well, when you're, when you're doing an insert, really, uh, or an update, because a delete doesn't, a delete couldn't cause you to violate your constraint, right? Did everybody get why that is? No, a delete on this table couldn't cause you to violate your constraint. Does everybody get why that is? Does anybody not get why that is? Okay. Um, so basically, again, we uh, select some stuff from uh, from a place that violates the constraint. If we find something, uh, we talk a little bit about, you know. <laughs> I think it. I think this is the correct error code. Does that seem reasonable? Uh, I, th there were several choices, and I never quite know which one to, to use. Um, and alrighty. So then, of course, once you have the trigger function, you have to create the trigger. And we go to another live demo. Woohoo! Okay. So again, we, I, I just scrubbed everything before from the previous demo because I just wanted these to, to roll all on their own. So we create the tables, we create the function, the trigger, the other function, the other trigger, and now let's uh, put, a, put that, those same three ball-peen hammers in the inventory. And the, uh, the elders go check out ball peen hammers. And Benny runs up and tries to get a ball peen hammer and is unfortunately disappointed. At least we hope so. Yep. But see this error? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that just appeared there. Um, and it doesn't really, I mean, I, I had to, I, I did, you know, write a, uh, specific error message and a hint um, <laughs> and like all that stuff has to be done every single time and it has to work right every single time. Um, so it does, it is functionally correct but it's kind of ugly. Um, now we're going to reduce the inventory past below the, the number of checked out tools again and this one actually works. Um, it said uh, people have already checked out all the ball peen hammers. Can't reduce the inventory. Um, so that's our um, uh, 
that's our live demos. Uh, and they didn't actually break in ways that I had <laughs> hadn't anticipated, so uh, I say win. So how did we get here? Like, how, how are we talking about this? Um, well, in 1969, a guy named Ted Codd wrote a, da. <laughs> okay, let's be realistic. <laughs> um, so there's this paper that Kevin Grittner, is he here this time? I don't think so. Um, anyway, so Kevin Grittner is a, a contributor to Postgres, and um, he wrote this paper with uh, Dan Ports, and he they they had sort of come up with a way to uh, have an alternative to serial two-phase locking. I think that's what S2PL stands for. Somebody will correct me if I if it wasn't. Um, and this involved basically um, making graphs, looking for cycles, and breaking the cycles. Somebody correct me if I'm mistaken on the high-level stuff. I don't know the real low-level details of it, but that's my understanding. Is that roughly it? <laughs> okay. Um, so, <clears throat> based on that, that was all that was. I think headed towards Postgres, or, or at least looked like it, it might have already even been committed. Um, Peter sends a uh, uh, an assertions prototype patch in 2013. <laughs> so this is, yeah. So th this is th this has been coming for a while, even even by uh, e even by project standards. Um, Right. Uh, years pass. <laughs> I guess Peter had other things that he he had that were more important to do, and I'm I'm glad he did them. Uh, then Joe Wildish, whose patch were the we're looking at the the output of that patch right now, um, or the results that that patch uh, gives us. Um, he sends one that's a work in progress, and it's much improved. I, I was able to actually apply it. Um, I was actually able to compile Postgres with a uh, patch from the wild, which is not always the case. Um, it threw one tiny warning, but the warning was basically from, um, or sorry, the, the, the latest one. Uh, through one tiny warning, but it was basically uh, some niggling about like where you do. Uh, there were some declarations after the after some code, <laughs> so so that I didn't consider that a really significant warning. Um, I'm still not a hundred percent clear on why that's a problem in C, but um, C99 forbids it. C99 forbids it. Okay. Oh, everything before C99 and C99 permits it. Okay, so we go C89, and so we got this anyway. So that was the um, that was the patch that that we're working on. Uh, what's in there? Glad you asked. I really appreciate. Um, That he, uh, oops, oh, where was that? Uh, there we go. So he went and actually wrote the documents that go along with it in his prototype. That was very nice of him. <laughs> Not everybody does that. Um, so there's, uh, yeah, this, this, this actually was f fairly clear writing, and I really appreciate it. Um, when I 
when I'm trying to report what patches got sent in a week, it uh, <laughs> it helps to know what's what what all is exactly in there. Um, right. So, Postgres implementation has certain restrictions on what check expressions are allowed in the statements. I can show you a few um, if we have time. So. Oh, that's the, uh, uh, this is the commit fest page. Okay, so uh, there were changes to PG catalog, which support assertions. There was stuff in the information schema, which now reflects now the fact that we can have assertions. Um, there was SQL grammar. Uh, there was support for, um, all the create, alter, and drops. Um, and the part that I know the very least about, which is the really important part of this, um, which is the planner and the executor. Um, So um, I'd like to take a little moment to show some of the other rough burrs that I found on this thing because they seem significant. Um, I, I'm going to have to kind of live code these things, um, but bear with me. So uh, let's make a table. Okay, so does that look like a reasonable constraint? What I'm doing is restricting the sum of the i's in the foo table to be 10. Um, why do I have a coalesce in there? In case there's no rows, yeah. So there's a coalesce in there, so I wanna make sure that, that, um, so that, that we can only apply this constraint after we've um, Oh, thank you. Uh, it's right there. Okay. So, um, so what do you expect to happen? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Kaboom. <laughs> now. It, I think it only took out the back end because if I connect back to this, um, <laughs> it should be okay, but that's probably not what should be happening <laughs> on a... Uh, do we know why? Well, the, that, that's, that's where I sort of have reached the end of my current skill set. Um, I tried uh, attaching a debugger to the back end and uh, but I didn't see anything obvious. If we put the assertion in before there was data in the table, would it work? The question was, if we put the assertion in before there was data in the table, would it work? Uh, well, let's try it. Uh, uh, let's see. So, no table, no data. Any bets as to uh, crash and burn behavior here? Who thinks it's gonna? Who thinks it's gonna stay up? Okay. 
Uh, I, again, if I, if I knew what this was, I would already be working on fixing it. Uh, well, let's try it. So let's... Aha! Woo! <laughs> there we go. So that's the that's your answer. Uh, it will uh, correctly notice that there's no data in the table, and it will correctly fail to create the assertion. Can we insert the top now? Let's try it. Yep. Well, it, actually, we can't. So, so the the thing is, like, I think it failed, right? I, I, I believe it. You're missing the comma in the coordinates. Sorry? You're missing the comma in the coordinates with just one parameter. Oh, uh, you're right. Oh. Uh, try 10. Uh, right. No, I, I want it to, no, I want it to actually be zero. Um, yeah, I want it to be, yeah, good, good, good call. I, I actually want it to be zero. I d don't want it to be null. I want this to be, I want this to throw falseness. Like, I, I want to make sure that, sorry? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, it's fine. I think that, that, that zero needs to be a 10. Or do you need that an empty An empty table needs to be treated as success. It's, well, that's it just it. Okay. I, I, I don't think it actually is okay. <laughs> so this. Then you can't have a, so the table's not allowed to be empty. Right. So let's say it's uh, so, so. Let's say the table represents guards on duty at any given time, <laughs> right? Try inserting into the table and then asserting. Right. Yep, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you, but you but you could do um here. Let me. Right, so I'm going to stick in deferrable initially deferred. Oh, hey, <laughs> our assertion now works. Let's uh, let's try another little something. Begin. Hasn't blown up yet. <laughs> Ta da Oh sure. If you did that outside of a transaction, it would have failed, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, if if I had done the, these two operations uh, outside a transaction, it would it should blow up. And actually I'm gonna try that right now. I'm gonna try and violate it. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> so this is what I want us to have in the, the release notes for 12 <laughs> is first database on earth ever to implement SQL, <laughs> SQL standard assertions. <laughs> and I think we can do it. Questions? Comments? Yes?
how is it implemented? How does the database know when to verify? I believe it's similar to a check constraint. I didn't quite understand the code well enough to figure that out, to be honest. Because the check constraint can just be executed every time a row is changed. Yeah, I think you could have a deferrable check constraint. Right, the, the, the comment was you don't want to execute anything, any, this whole thing anytime anything changes because the performance. <laughs> and that's, that's right. Um, we'll have to figure that out. Jeff? I haven't seen the implementation, but uh, uh, the assertions are meant to be uh, or can be enforced at the construction boundaries and are essentially conditions on the whole table. Yeah, I think you'd run it for any sequence of write operations inside of a transaction, or at the end of a transaction that has a write to those. I, mean, I have checked like uh, some very simple description of like what, what the standard actually says. Okay. And it says it's like at the transaction boundary. So the standard apparently does say that it's checked at the transaction boundary, and that's <coughs> probably where we should check it too. Sorry, Jeff, you had a. Yeah. Concurrency. <laughs> you test with uh, like you know a maximum of a maximum count of ten, and then you have nine tuples, and then two concurrent transactions. Ah, uh, sure. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, by the way, the <laughs> another nice thing he put into this prototype was tab completion for PSQL. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty that was pretty that was pretty considerate, I gotta say. Um, <laughs> if if Joe Wildish hasn't already contributed to Postgres, I hope he does a lot in the future. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, here we have um, you said a transaction that's, uh, you wanted an assertion where it's less than or equal to 10 or something? Like a, a count uh, less than three. Okay. Uh, select. Is count of empty count of empty table is zero as I recall. Is that yeah? Um, let's call it less than four because we've already got three. Oh, okay. You wanted to. Sure. Um, woo. <laughs> Uh, so you want to begin here. Oops. I think it actually crashed the whole <laughs> the whole thing and it restarted. <laughs> no, that I, I think that was the, the long-running connection and it was stale, right? So you just noticed it actually it crashed like 10 minutes ago. Right. Okay. And you switch windows. Mm -hmm. um, so... And then over here, you want to see if I can violate it. So now I start another transaction over here and try and. Insert three over here and see if you can violate the assertion. Yeah, I'd expect the insert to work. Yeah. 
So that, we're, we're, we're good so far. <laughs> well, actually we're bad so, well, I think we're good so far. Yeah, we're, we're at the, we're, we're, we haven't hit the transaction boundary. Nothing has been checked yet. Um, and then I, what, commit here or commit the other one? Which, which did you, Jeff? Okay, so just just commit this one. We're good here. Boom. So that's that's good. But try now with the read uh, with the snapshot isolation transaction, the um, the uh, repeatable read. Okay. I'm trying to see if they both get the snapshot for the assertion. Uh, So this one, yeah. and then another one on the other side that's also a repeatable read, yeah. or just okay. Yeah, and we'll have to empty the table again. Okay. So. Do this over here. Do that over there. Yeah. Then um, I think that's I think that's what I'd expect to see. Um, so now just commit this one or commit the other one or Okay, we're good. We're good. So, oops. Oop. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh wait. Uh, hang on a second. I didn't actually. Ins yeah, I did insert them back. Yep. <laughs> This is kind of what I meant by like, does it even make sense to provide a um, <clears throat> a feature in isolation levels that that can't guarantee that it could ever work? Oh sure. Oh, that's another helpful thing. Right, so I was thinking we could just force serializable on writes to things that have assertions. Sorry? If that's uh, if if that's if that's it for now, I guess I'll say thanks very much. <laughs>